Welcome to the Single and Stiletto Show. I'm so excited you could join us today. Today, as our special guest, we have Nando Rodriguez. He is a dating coach at Nandoism.com. And I'm so excited to have him here today because he is going to make you laugh guaranteed. He's got a great sense of humor. And more importantly, he's going to give you some amazing first date tips. And trust me, you will never go on a first date thinking about it in the same way again. But before we get into the interview today, let me give you a little bit of background on Nando. Nando is a dynamic blogger, dating coach, speaker, and online personality. He focuses on dating, sex, and relationships with the use of humor, logic, and a lot of Mexican wisdom. You can find his dating advice and tips on his blog, Nandoism.com, where you're sure to learn a thing or two about yourself and the way you date. He guarantees he'll make you see how to date a little bit different. So now, on to the interview with Nando. Hi, Nando. Welcome to the Single and Stiletto Show. I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank you. I'm so honored that you asked me. Oh, my God. You're one of my favorite people. You know you are. You've, you've <laughs> spoken at my Single and Stilettos event. You've been great. And everybody, all the women, just love you because you have such a great sense of humor. So I wanted to have you on the show today to talk about first date tips because at my very first single on Stilettos you talked about first date tips and you said a lot of interesting things and I think they're great tips for women so I first wanted to ask you about first dates and what expectations should a woman have when she goes on a first date what would you recommend well I think the first thing even before you step out of the door and even before you put the curlers out and take them out and put the lipstick on what you need to do is, I think women need to create an intent for the date. And what that does, it sets up the frame of the date. And what I mean by that is when you set up an intent is that you kind of create an agenda of what is going to happen. And so you create a realistic one, right? And so I would say the first thing on the agenda would be to number one is to have fun, right? Because what happens is, if something's going on and maybe, you know, they're telling a boring story or you're just like, maybe they were rude to the waiter, you know, we all hear stories about that, is that it's your responsibility to keep up for your part of the intent, which is what am I, what do I need to do to have fun? What I need to do to create that fun, you know? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it really throws the responsibility back onto the person, onto the dater. I think uh, many of us make a mistake and say, okay, He's going to have to thrill me, uh, pamper me, uh, wow me. And then we don't, or the women don't bring, you know, what do they bring to the table? So when you create that intent and you say your first, your first goal is to have fun, what are you doing to bring that fun element into the date? So that's number one. Okay. I think number two would be to get to know them a little bit more. And then number three would be to allow them to get to know you a little bit more. So there's that equal exchange. You always know that sometimes you end up with an A personality, type A personality, and they've overrun sort of what I'm doing here with you. And so what you want to do is you want to be able to create that balance. So always, and, and don't over flood your agenda. I say keeping those three things, having fun, getting to know them, and allowing them to know you. I think that creates a nice, good balance on a first date. I think you're totally right. And, you know, that's one of those things where I think a lot of women think, well, of course I'm going to get to know him and I'm going to let him get to know me. But I hear all the time from my male clients that the women talk the entire time about themselves and they didn't ask him any questions. And, you know, I think women like to talk a lot more, but it's important to, have, like you said, have that equal exchange. It's scientifically proven that women do have um, on, on the right side of the brain that more linguistic side to them and they have more access to it because men only have it on one side and women actually it, it's dominating on one side but then they have access on the other which means there's a lot more coming out of women, right? Wow. 
And mm-hmm. so women just have to be aware of that. And I also think it's nerves, you know, yeah. where the guy is like super hot and they're so anticipating and they don't know what to say. And, you know, it's the first time. that well, you're hopefully meeting. he's her- super hot, right? Yeah, of course, you know. But then, you know, you can always gauge things, you know, by being just like in the moment. Because if you're in the moment, you can kind of tell the person, you know, the glazed eyes are happening or, you know, it's like, oh, you know, if they're doing the nod or whatever it is. So. Be in the moment, and I think you'll actually be able to to assess your date situation. I, I completely agree. So let's talk about, what do you think about checklists? Because I've been noticing a lot of people, both men and women, but have these checklists, and I feel like they may want to make sure before they even go on the first date that everything's checked off and that the person has all of these things before they, they'll even say yes to the date. What are your thoughts on that? I say be careful of your checklist because it can actually be a keeping you single list in disguise. That's what I always tell my clients, right? Uh-huh. And a lot of the things, and you and I have had deep discussion on this, has to be this height, has to be in this uh, uh, industry, has to be this income level. And what you're really doing is that you're really narrowing down the type of person. I was thinking about this on the train yesterday. I was on the train and I was looking at all the people around because I like to play this game called who needs plastic surgery and what it is. And so I'm looking at all the people and I'm just thinking, okay, that guy needs a nose job. Okay, that woman needs breast reduction. But then I kept thinking, you know, I'm being very judgmental. And what if I was in a date, what if I was single in a dating situation and I'm turning this guy down because I feel like he needs a nose reduction? What if I'm turning this woman down because I think she needs bigger breasts, you know? And inside is this most amazing, caring, nurturing people. What folks forget is that in the dating, in the in, in the phasing or in the phase of dating, all you're worried about is like the sex factor, the sexiness. You know, what can they do for me? Is is my seven and their ten gonna make us the power couple, you know? But then when you get into a real relationship and someone's parent dies or someone loses their job and you need that person to be your rock, that nose and those breasts aren't going to come and play at all. They really aren't. You're absolutely right. And, you know, it's funny because I say that, too. You don't fall in love with the checklist. You fall in love with someone's character, their integrity, their personality, and all the way the person reacts to you and the way the person makes you feel. It's not because they have a master's degree or, like you said, they're six foot one or they make over 250000 That's not what makes you fall in love with somebody. So I think It's strange that when you, when you look at big cities like New York and maybe Los Angeles, right, where it's so known to go out in groups that no one wants to be the friend with the ugly boyfriend. No one wants to be the friend with, like, the number two girlfriend, right? And so I think in big cities like New York, people have to be very consciously aware that that checklist, is it yours or is it your friend's? Is it your group's checklist? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because, again, (laughs) you know, there's people in Iowa falling in love left and right that aren't models. You know, there's people in Minnesota with the Uggs and the coats and the scars falling in love. And, and why is that? Why is it that we claim New York and the hot cities, it's so difficult to date and so difficult to find love, but it's that checklist that we keep. You know, and I think it's also your parents, too. Um, if your parents have a huge influence on you, like some parents will say, well, you know, he has to be highly educated and he has to come from this type oh. of family background. So that also comes into play besides your friends and the people that you're trying to impress. So... I think you're absolutely right. Um, so tell me, what do you think is the biggest mistake that women make on a first date? I think it, well, I have in, in my ebook, I have, a, I have a section called what not to do on your first date mm-hmm. or even before your first date. And I think one of the biggest mistakes is technology is great, right? Where I found my boyfriend through the use of an app, so I'm not going to, poo-poo on technology because without it I would be single right now but I think sometimes we have to use technology appropriately I think people get too close too fast so even before the first dates even happen you've already texted the person numerous times that by the time the first date rolls around 
there's nothing really left to talk about because you've already been exchanging so much, right? right. So I would say be careful of the texts. And, and also I would say um, once you set up that first date, no more contact. No more contact until the first date. Build some of that mystery. We all love that anticipation of, you know, what's he going to say? Is he going to be funny? Is he going to do this? Is he going to do that? You know, but just no more contact after the first date. That's my number one rule. No, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. So do you think a woman could set herself up for failure if her expectations are too high? Yeah, and that's what, and that's, and that's part of the ebook as well. And what I call in your head syndrome. Right. Okay. So you either, you know, whether it was online, whether you met through a friend or whether you met in real in real life at the grocery store and you set up the date and then all of a sudden you're lying in bed or maybe you're on your way to work and you're just like in your head, he's going to open the door for me in your head. He's going to pay for the first meal in your head. He's going to tell you the funniest joke the moment you walk in in your head. He's going to give you the biggest compliment in the world. And you know what, the guy is just as nervous as you are in many cases. And so we, you know, the guys make full pause. The guys like screw things up a little bit and because they didn't match what was in your head, then your expectations are completely shot. And then you come home and you're pissed and you rant and you rave and you start a blog and then here we are. Yeah, and I'm going to take it one step further. I think a lot of women go on the first date going, is this going to be the one that's going to be my husband? And that's just too much expectations. When the guy just goes on the first date and he's like, oh, I'm going on a first date to meet someone and maybe we'll hit it off. Maybe we won't. Who knows? So I think that's a really good point. Um, and I think that's part of the whole creating an intent, right? So it's like to have fun, to get to know me and for them to get to, and for me to get to know them. Nowhere on there did I say, Create, start your registry, you know? So, yes, yes, th that is a big mistake, thinking the one. Yeah, exactly. Now, what are, what are your thoughts on when someone goes on a first date and they say, I, I had an okay time, it wasn't something that was, like, out of this world. Do you suggest that people go on a second date? What, what are your thoughts on that? I do. I do think that people should go on that second date because, you know what, Here's the thing, um, scientifically proven, our willpower goes down by the end of the night, which means that you've probably, you know, have been making all these big major decisions all day long. And by the time you get out and you're ready for your date, you're kind of like worn out. So you, 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 the guy might have forgotten to pull out your chair if that's something that you're into. The, you know, the, the, the women might have forgotten to, you know, their best joke or it, the delivery was wrong. People are tired. This is New York. You're meeting people. And so I say give it another shot because you just never know. Imagine, you know, going on to a job interview and, you know, you really are the right person for the job. But, you know, the, it was scheduled late. You had a bad day, but you didn't want to cancel because that would make you look like a flake. So you show up and, you know, you're kind of tired. The energy's kind of low and you don't make that great impression. Yes, give it a second shot, I would say. Oh, but I completely that agree. Ain't that intent. Yeah, and I completely agree because I hear too many times, well, people expect like fireworks on the first date. And I'm like, it doesn't always happen like that. People are nervous on a first date. So not everybody is completely themselves on a first date. And you want to get to know them. And I hear too many times people go, no, there wasn't that chemistry. I know what it's like to be in love. And I'm like, it's only the first date. So... I I think what happens is that because we've all experienced those fireworks on the first date, you know, and what you have to realize is what were what were the phenomena working that day that helped create that, you know, did you get a raise that day? Did you get a book deal that day? Did you go and get your hair colored and it turned out amazing so your serotonin and your endorphins were already pumping high? So when you met this person, it could have been Danny DeVito and you still felt fireworks. You know what I'm saying? So again, be careful of that because if you think about it, we all, we're not one dimensional, right? And so what happens is when you go on multiple dates with, with the same person, you get to see a little bit more reveal each and every time. And it might not be till the second or third date that, oh my God, that's the guy, you know, that's right. the personality that I wanted. Because one, date number one, there was nerves. Date number two, he's kind of thinking, oh my God, I can't believe she's going on date number two with me, you know? And then date number three, there's some relaxation going on. Exactly. 
And you know, it's so funny because I want to say to people, well, you may have experienced those fireworks on the first date, but you're not with that person right now. So apparently it didn't work out. So be more open when you go on a first date, right? You just serve them. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. Ain't nobody got time for that, you know? <laughs> so anyway, so I'd love to ask you one last question. And that question is, give us your best first dating tip for women. I am going to say don't beyond be, beyond the whole, you know, keep the communication to a minimum after the first date has been set. I would say no naughty photos. None. I would say be wary if he is sending you naughty photos immediately because that to me sends a signal of where his mind is and and if it doesn't match to where yours is at, then that gives you major red flags are coming out already. So right, be okay. aware of that. And so when, you know, don't get blindsided, you know, three months later when you find out, you know, he's a big porn star or, or whatever, because, you know, he started sending you pics of his beep beep, you know, uh, way before. So no naughty photos. I completely agree. I think that's a great first date tip. And I think that's the funniest first date tip we've had so far. So, well, thanks, Dondo, for being on the show. You were great. And I know everybody loved your first date tips. Thanks, Suzanne. Bye, everyone. Listen to Suzanne. She is the expert. She gives you all the top advice. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on the Single on Stiletto show. We do this show once a week, so stay tuned for next week's episode. And before you go, don't forget, I'm giving away a free dating report on the top 10 secrets on what attracts a man. And trust me, it's not what you think. It's not about being a size 2. Trust me. And I'll also tell you in the report how to get more men to approach you and what you may be doing that is actually scaring men away. So to get the report, just click right here.